Hey, what is going on, guys? Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up uh, ZSH as well as Oh My ZSH on uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. If you've ever used ZSH before on uh, Linux or even Mac OS, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But this is more of a guide focused on how to get this uh, working for Windows. So um, let's say, for example, if you're tired of using the plain old command prompt and you want something that feels a little bit more nicer, feels a little bit more different, uh, then you definitely want to look into oh my ZSH. It's obviously not going to really change much in terms of like you know running the commands, but there are some plugins um, as well as customizations that you can uh, do for the command prompt. And personally, for me, you know you're going to spend all your time working with the command prompt. It feels nice to have a command prompt or some kind of shell that is very interactive, has nice colors, nice themes. Not required, but it does feel ni feels nice. Okay. Anyway, so for example. If you want to have a theme for your terminal that looks similar to this, okay, this is how it looks like on Mac, but it will look very similar in the shell when we actually install it. And there's tons of themes that exist that people have created. You can even create your own theme if you really want to. Okay, I urge you guys to browse through all of these different, um, all of these different themes. I'm just going to show you guys how to get that started. So the first thing that we'll need to do is we'll obviously need to one, have Windows Subsystem for Linux installed. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to do that because I'm already assuming that you guys already did. So that's obviously the first step. One, make sure you have WSL2 installed. Um, if you don't have installed, there are plenty of guides out there. You just need to make sure you have virtualization enabled and you need to make sure that Windows Subsystem for Linux is a feature that is turned on in your Windows settings, okay? There's, like I said, it's really easy to do that. Once you have... Uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, you need to make sure you have your distribution of choice, your Linux distribution of choice. Now, for this tutorial, I am going to use uh, Ubuntu, but you can honestly use any distribution. You should be able to use any distribution. Uh, I've never used anything other than Ubuntu before, so I don't know if a ZSH works for uh, others, but uh, I'm not going to say if they do because I've never used it before, but I'm just going to use Ubuntu. Okay, but it should work though. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be a big. It shouldn't be a big problem. It should. It should, it should just work fine. So I'm going to go ahead and install Ubuntu 20.04, and uh, it's going to be really easy. Like so, you can install whatever you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and install. Okay, so this should take about a couple seconds for me. Okay, so we just installed Ubuntu. So if I go over to start, I should be able to type Ubuntu, and it should pop up as an app. And when I open it up, I should see this uh, interactive shell or this uh, command prompt like program. And it's just going to ask me to enter a username. So I'll just type in Arizona and then password. Okay, there we go. So we have the password set up already. And you can see that we are logged into our uh, Linux virtual machine. And now if I go over to my Windows terminal, and this is another application that you can install uh, in the Microsoft Store. So just go to the Microsoft Store, type in terminal. All right, so now if I uh, go over to this uh, carrot symbol or the chevron, and if I click on Ubuntu 20.04, you should see that I should be able to go into my uh, Ubuntu VM, and I can literally use bash commands. Okay, I can type sudo update. Okay, and I can do whatever I want, like an actual uh, Ubuntu uh, environment. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and install ZSH, because if we type in ZSH, it's going to say not found. So let's go ahead and install that. So let's do sudo app install ZSH, ZSH. Okay, and then just type yes. Okay, and once we install that, I can type ZSH. And then what I can do is I'm going to type 2 uh, so we can populate our ZSHRC file with the recommended configuration. So I'll just type 2. And there you go. So we can see that some things definitely change. We have this highlighter already. We have this tilde sign, I think, this squiggly. Um, let me go ahead and create a directory. 
you can see that there's definitely uh, some changes. But nothing too uh, nothing too crazy. Okay, and if I type lsao, you can see that we have this bash rc, well not that, uh, this zshrc file. Okay, now right now by default, if I were to close the Linux shell, the Ubuntu shell, and if I were to open it up again, you can see by default it does not set it to zsh, but don't worry. Uh, you can manually set it to zsh yourself, or we can just install oh my zsh and that'll do it for us. So oh my zsh allows you to add a bunch of different configurations, more advanced configurations for your ZSH uh, shell. And it has a bunch of uh, plugins as well and themes. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is install oh my ZSH, And this is pretty much, um, uh, you can think of it like a package that you can use to configure and manage your ZSH configurations. Um, so well, it's, it's more of like a framework is what they say it is. Um, but yeah, pretty much you can add a bunch of different plugins. You can add a bunch of different functionalities for your ZSH uh, shell. And it's honestly really nice. I like it a lot. Uh, so to install this, and I'll leave links in the description so you guys can actually uh, reference them. Don't worry, I'll leave all of the links that you'll need in order to uh, you know visit these, visit these websites. We're going to go to this website, uh, omyz.sh. Okay, you're going to scroll down to the install my ZSH now instructions over here. And you can either use curl or wget. doesn't really matter too much. We'll just use curl. And uh, I'll just go ahead and copy this. It's really just going to download the install the sh script and execute it. So we're going to go ahead and paste this uh, script inside our Ubuntu shell. So... I'm going to go back all the way to the Ubuntu directory. And we'll just do that. So all it's going to do is just download the script and run it. So. And there we go. You can see that it says cloning into oh my ZSH. And it's going to tell you, do you want to change your default shell to ZSH? So we'll just type yes. You don't have to. If you still want to uh, uh, start, up, start up your uh, environment with Bash, you can have it by default to bash. But I'll uh, leave it to default with a ZSHRC. And then uh, type in the password, the password for your Linux account. And there you go, it was really that easy. Okay, so now you can see that we have a much cleaner, a much cleaner uh, shell already. And if I go into, if I create, I'll create a directory, so let's do git project. Okay, and then if I, cd into there. If I do git init, we should see the branch name that we're currently on. If I do git checkout, iPhone B, feature, payment processing, you can see that it'll tell me what, uh, what branch I am currently on. Now, there's a bunch of themes that you can install. Okay. Uh, so if you're, if you're not using Windows and let's say you're using Linux or Mac, uh, you will need to install f the powerline fonts in order for these uh, these themes to render properly, especially for the icons. If you're on Windows, I don't think you need to install it for the Linux environment. You just need to install it on your Windows system and it should work. But we'll, we'll double check that. So let's say, for example, let me go back to the root directory. And you can see that I have uh, this .zshrc file. And so you can actually put your environment variables in here. So I want you guys to pay attention to this ZSH theme, this Robbie Russell one. So right now by default, it's Robbie Russell. But let's say if we change it to, uh, to Agnostic. And the money just kind of like go and again. You can see that the shell uh, shows the colors uh, but you can see that the icons are a little bit broken and doesn't it doesn't really render properly. And that's because we don't have the fonts set up. Now, the fonts are really easy to install. Uh, so, like I said, if you're on Linux, obviously you're not going to be using the Windows PowerShell. Uh, you need to install the fonts. So, you just go to powerline slash fonts. I'll, I guess I'll leave a link in the description for this GitHub repository. You're going to go to the powerline uh, repository slash fonts. And you can just do sudo apt get install fonts powerline. 
but I should be able to just actually just install this on uh, I should be able to install this on Windows and it should just work fine so all you really need to do is just clone this repository and run this install up ps1 script and that's just a PowerShell script that will install all of the uh, it'll install all of the necessary fonts from the folder okay so uh, you don't have to worry so much about that so we can just go ahead and just do that open up a new terminal clone. So when you run that install script, that uh, install PS1 script, that will literally just install the fonts for you using a PowerShell script. Uh, I already have it installed already, so it's just going to ask me if I want to replace the font. So I'm not going to run that. It should take about one or two minutes uh, for you to install the necessary fonts. Okay. Now, once you have the fonts installed, you want to make sure you configure your Windows terminal. So uh, let's go ahead and go to settings. You're going to click on the distribution, so Ubuntu 20.04. And you're going to click on Appearance, and you're going to change the font to a Powerline font. So, for example, you can select Anonymous Pro, Deja Vu, basically any one of these fonts that were in a repository that you can find should just work just fine. So if I select uh, Deja Vu Sans Mono font, I'll save that. You can see that now it actually renders the icons nice. So I go to Git Project. You can see that I have the icons over here. If I were to, whoops, changes back to a different font, you can see that it does not show up. So you need one of those Powerline patch fonts. And you can play around with the fonts until you find one that you honestly really like. It doesn't really matter. It's really just personal preference. Um, on you know what what you like obviously. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And one last thing that I'll do is I'll also add a color scheme. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, I have one already. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just open the JSON file. Actually, I should be able to just add a color scheme over here. Well, actually, wait, never mind. This will actually require me. I want to paste the JSON file. You can actually go to a website called Windows Terminal Themes Dev right over here, and you can browse for a bunch of different uh, themes that you might like, or you can create your own custom theme. But you can always customize the themes that you get from this website. Okay, so what I'm going to do is over here in Schemes, I'm going to go ahead and paste in that Batman color scheme, and for the uh, Ubuntu shell only. I'm going to set the color scheme to Batman. Okay. Um, and that should be it. I'll set the font size to... Actually, I should be able to just set the size right over here. Let's do 14. So now when I open up... What's going on over here? Should be fine. Okay. So now if I open up a Ubuntu shell... I should get everything the way that I want it. So you can see that we have our color scheme applied and it's going to be completely different than a regular uh, Windows PowerShell. And we can configure different profiles. And if I don't like the text for this, I can easily change that. But I'm not sure which color the text is. Okay, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys liked this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like down below. And you know, leave a comment and subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.